stres twój cię. This is the only word I know in Russian with uh, davai davai and uh, <laughs> very little. But thank you for coming, for being here. Uh, my name is Nuseta Kedi. I am uh, part of uh, General Hydroponics Europe and also uh, part of Terra Aquatica. Um, I'm happy to be here today. I have been co-founder of General Hydroponics Europe, GHE, in France uh, in 1995. I have been uh, a co-manager and also uh, um, um, manager of sales and marketing for many, many years. Now, since 2017, I am retired, but it doesn't mean that I forgot my passion, and this is why I am here today, to continue to convey this passion to everybody and especially to the younger people and also to all the, to all the rest. So, my conference today is about urban food production. And I should have said also family production. This is a passion that I am carrying since 1995 and even before when we were in California. At that time we were working with GH US and we were testing the products. We had a family farm called the White Owl, and we will talk about it in a little while. And at that time, we were carrying the idea that production of food has to be in the family, local, good quality, nutritious. So, um, this is uh, the theme of my conference today. Um, small history. As we all know, family farming has always been on this planet. Uh, every little family in the past had its little garden and was producing its food. Um, of course, with the development of times, with the increase of population in the world, we had to, to feed more and more people. To do so, we had to have uh, industrial farming. And industrial farming, as everybody knows, is aiming on quantity instead of quality. So, with the time, um, to produce more, they had to use more and more pesticides, herbicides, chemicals. The idea of industrial production is quality, is, sorry, is quantity, and also to have a fruit and vegetable that can be manipulated in super, super uh, markets as much as possible without losing their quantity or their quality or even the looks of it. So uh, manipulation, genetical manipulation happened also a lot. And at the end of the day, today in the 21st century, we have food that has no taste, no vitamins, uh, nothing, nothing nutritious. So, um, so urban farms today and family farms. I have to add, I forgot to add this, uh, the word of family farm because we were here in city farmers, but really family farm is extremely important to me also. Um, so, um, uh, today the idea of uh, family and urban farm is developing a lot because you guys, us in everywhere on the planet, we need to have good food for us and for our children and for those who are coming also. So, what is the, the goal of a family or an urban farm? It is first of all to produce quality food. This is extremely... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, no? Yes? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Um, yeah, so if a family farm or an urban farm wants to produce and distribute good quality food. We want also to reduce costs uh, of transportation among all. Uh, food coming from uh, thousands or hundreds of kilometers away becomes very expensive and loses its freshness. Uh, we want to save on resources and reduce packaging as much as possible. When you go in the supermarket, you have packaging of plastic over plastic over plastic, and then we have to throw this plastic away. And we all know where this plastic goes. We have seen our oceans, our lands, our rivers. So it's good to save on that. Uh, also, family urban farms, they supplement the family in income and is important and contributes also in the local economy, which is also extremely important. We get the money back into our hands and not in the big hands. So, yeah, the first, uh, the first um, the awareness that people got about the importance of the quality of their, of their food, anyway, in France and in Western Europe, 
uh, was that famous mad cow disease. I don't know if you got the information here, but um, the cattle that was raised, uh, be it cattle, beef, cows, uh, um, fish, uh, um, poultry, whatever, were fed in such a way that to become very fat and very uh, uh, heavy, uh, but uh, was really bad for the, for the animals that became sick. And suddenly people realized that what they had in their, in their um, dishes in their, on their table was terribly toxic. So that was the first awareness to say, ah, but what are we eating? Um, so, um, yeah, organic food became important, but not only organic. Uh, hydroponic production was important also under the condition that it was of good quality. And this is what we at GHC bring to the, to the industry. A little bit of history. Ah, thank you, William. He's reminding me that I should move <laughs> this, uh, these slides. Thank you. Um, yeah, a little bit of history. Um, as I was saying first, uh, the vision of a family farm was very important to us at uh, GH. And in 1990, with William Texier, we founded uh, the White Owl Water Farm. The White Owl Water Farm was a greenhouse testing the GH products, systems, and nutrients. And uh, producing that, uh, those, those, uh, those foods, we had to sell them. So the idea was to sell excellent quality food and uh, to, um, to be able to sell them somewhere. We decided we were going to aim for the highest um, clients. Uh, the most um, uh, demanding clients. So we went in the Bay Area of San Francisco and we uh, visited all the best restaurants. One of them, might, some people might know them, but uh, they are still very famous. They are called Chez Panis in Berkeley. And the first day I went to this lady, Alice Waters, and I told her I'm producing uh, um, red peppers and basil, would you buy them? And she said, no, 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 we just take organics, no, 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 no way. And I said, okay, I can bring you a sample and you will see. So I came back with my samples and she brought her uh, cooks. There were four cooks around the round table like this. And I had my little bag and I put it here and I said, taste it. So they tasted it and they said, okay, we are taking this. So this was the, the vision we had. We can make good food even if it's, the plant is not in soil, even if it is in plastic, on the, on, the, on the condition that our nutrients are so good and so precise that they would leave no residue, no toxicity in the food. And we did it. So, oops, sorry. Uh -oh. Technology, sorry. Voilà. So that was in 1990. In 1995, we came to, to France, we founded General Hydroponics Europe, and we were talking about our technology for food production, and French people were saying, oh, plastic, no, 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 we need soil, we need soil. So anyways, we continued our work with <laughs> lots of dedication, until one day, in 2014, came this young couple. She is French, and he's from Argentina. They had heard about hydroponics when they used to live in Argentina, and came to France to start a new business. We met them, and when we saw these two guys, we thought about ourselves at their age. This was our uh, next generation of hydroponic growers. So we helped them. GHE sponsored their, uh, their greenhouse, and their name is Les Sourciers. In French, Sourcier is the people who find water, so the, they, it means they find the, the, the initial, um, uh, the source of, uh, of, of new things. So this is why I like very much their names. So what did they want to do? They wanted to develop hydroponics, create also a pilot farm so that everybody could come and see that yes, it can work. They wanted to continue as we used to do, to, um, uh, to uh, serve uh, high-end restaurants, Michelin-starred restaurants, and they succeeded very, very well. They also decided to, uh, to offer training uh, to young people, to young entrepreneurs, and this is what they still do today, and uh, also spread the concept as much as possible. Mario and Nicolai, uh, Nicola, <laughs> uh, 
um, are very dedicated and they do an excellent work. If you go on their channel, I think they have an English speaking channel also. And um, they do lots of YouTube and Instagram and you guys, do, especially the young ones, you know this. So you can go and have a look at the, fo at the photos. Now we are in 2016 and the work of Marion and Nicola and ours developed and uh, at the same time the city, the mayor of Paris decided that uh, it was time to do something about uh, growing food in the city, knowing that the uh, uh, food coming from very very far away was not uh, the best uh, choice. And also because they wanted to uh, put forward and uh, develop uh, every single space, uh, empty space of the city uh, for food. Tour Eiffel, Paris. So um, they created a, um, um, a, a project that is called Les Pariculteurs, which means Paris Agricultures, Pariculteurs. And um, they offered the roofs of buildings, parking space, ground, uh, uh, underground spaces, uh, walls, everything that was available for, um, for horticulture. Even decorative plants also, they wanted plants because plants make you breathe, brings oxygen to, to, a, to the space. So um, what they did is that uh, they asked for um, projects um, and uh, depending on the project, if they liked it, they would offer the space for free. So the people don't have to pay rent or buy space, but just develop their, their um, project. Many projects pushed and sponsored by GHE were authorized and accepted. And today in Paris we have uh, many uh, different um, spaces, different areas where food is grown. And very often the food is grown on top of the building and sold, or either in the stores or in the restaurants on the street downstairs. <coughs> this is a few uh, photos. These are a few photos of, uh, of our um, um, of our projects. Some are with our systems, some are with other systems, but all the time it is our food, our nutrients. By the way, uh, well, I will talk about this later. Um, so, as you can see, this is on the top of, uh, of the train station, and in the, in the back there you can see a train going by. So, and the second one is on top of the building, it is cool downstairs, and uh, the, the the, the project, the, the growing project is on top of the roof and uh, they sell the, f the food to the canteen in the school and also everything that is remaining uh, that is not as fresh, they would uh, give it away in the, around, around the school. This is another project, it's underground. In Paris, in one of the areas of Paris, there was uh, this, these buildings that uh, were not used, especially the, the parking lots. And there was lots of criminality happening in those parking lots and they didn't know what to do with them. So somebody decided to make a food growing project underneath in the parking. And now you have many small uh, companies uh, growing uh, food, uh, some of them uh, as you can see, here is basil. This is uh, this one on the. Is it the same one? Uh, yes. No, it's not the same company. The one on the, on the left here, they are growing uh, different foods and building uh, uh, very beautiful decorative structures with fish and plants, and they sell them for decoration for homes. The one on the right, they are selling basil and um, developing mainly basil. This is in the same parking space on the left. They do mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms. And uh, it's a huge, huge, it's a, every, as, as every parking lot you can see space for many, many, many cars. It's all empty and you have these structures with mushrooms sprouting all over the place. It's, uh, and it's a very good, uh, very good business financial. Um, also on the right, I wanted to show the Flora series used. Uh, uh, it's often the, the product that they use uh, in those places. 
In 2018, uh, was created a new association, the Association of uh, Professional Urban Growers in Paris. This association uh, gathers all the new um, horticulturists uh, in, in Paris and uh, helps them uh, to with uh, information, advice. Uh, it is uh, also linked with a very important agricultural school of Paris, so they can have all the support that they need. Uh, again, their, their goal is to, uh, of course, improve the nutrition and the food autonomy in the cities, recycle uh, waste, air and water, because this is very much into the, the spirit of times, uh, add value to the urban property, of course, if you have a parking lot that is empty, it's better to have people making food in there, and also reconnect citizens with nature, because in the cities we forgot nature, we are all so far away from it, so it was a good way also to have people come and join in, in joint, uh, joint ventures. So, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. My, technology is not my first, uh, my first uh, passion, so I can uh, uh, not be uh, very much up to it. But here it is. Okay. So, what do you do when you do farming? We do hydroponics and soil, as you can see. Uh, you can do any size project. You have small um, pots like the one on the left. Uh, it is an individual pot where you can grow your herbs. And often you have small restaurants that have this little, um, this, uh, little pot uh, uh, inside the restaurant and they come and they pick up the herbs in, for, in front of the clients and they go and put it to spice the, the food that they are serving. Or also in, in a kitchen or in a living room uh, when people don't have too much space. Then you have middle size, and what you see here is interesting because middle size uh, greenhouses can have small systems and vary the production of different foods. You can have in the same space salads and basil and tomato and peppers, etc. So it's interesting to have this kind of structure. And then you have larger spaces. This one I think was taken in Perm um, a few years ago. They do salads, all kinds of greens and salads. Uh, we are specialists in hydroponics, but it doesn't mean that we don't know soil. Uh, quite the opposite. Uh, our nutrients are of excellent, excellent quality. And what you have to know is when a nutrient is made for hydroponics, it is very precise, it's highly soluble, it's complete, exhaustive. So, if it is good for hydroponics, it's even better for soil. And when you use it in soil, you use it in less quantities. So you can make sure that these products are good for your food. So what's hydroponics? I think that everybody in this room knows about it. I'm not going to repeat and I see that. Oops. Voila, so hydroponics is uh, growing food out of soil. Uh, generally in plastic, but I have seen beautiful system lately with uh, Mr. Ivan Martirosian uh, that are made in, uh, in steel. And they are magnificent and the plants they are growing are really beautiful, so you can have it in steel, maybe it's a little bit more expensive. So it's made in plastic containers, it's oxygen rich water and uh, very highly so, uh, no, um, soluble uh, nutritive. Uh, I said here minerals because at the time it was minerals, but nowadays our organic line was invented especially for hydroponics, so it is extremely and highly soluble and exhaustive complete also. Why hydroponics? This also you might know, but still. Um, we say that in hydroponics we have a rule of 30%. 30% more quality, more quantity, sorry. 30% uh, more production, 30% uh, higher leads in, in, in general. Uh, you save a lot of water and today water is so scarce, so important for our future that we have to be very careful about how we are using it. It has a high propagation rate and also when you do it correctly, a high return upon investment. So who are we? I think that probably most of you know who is GHE now. Uh, we are a company created uh, in 1995 in France and we are known today worldwide to be specialists in plant nutrition and in hydroponics. A 
as I said before, we started uh, with stems from uh, GH in California. But since then, lots of history has happened. Uh, we are very faithful and very loyal to the company that helped us create the GHE. Lawrence Brook is our friend, is the founder of GH. And um, at the end of this conference, if I have time, and I, have, I, I hope I do have, I will tell you a little bit of our history concerning the, 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 the companies. Anyway, since 1995 in Europe, we developed our market, first in Europe, and now in many other countries, Russia being one of our very, very good um, markets. Uh, the public in Russia is extremely open and interested in, in our technology. And also we have markets in India, in Japan, in South Africa, in the Middle East, a lot more and more. So, our specialty is, of course, 30 years in plant nutrition, 30 years in hydroponic food farms. We can accompany you in your projects. We make um, uh, made-to-measure uh, systems, so hydroponic systems, and the other day I think that William showed one of our latest systems, the growth streams. I will show a photo a little later. And uh, we can, of course, uh, we have a very important uh, line of nutrients and supplements. So why do are we so, uh, so careful about uh, our minerals and our food for plants? It is uh, because um, often uh, when we go uh, and meet uh, uh, big industrial producers and they see our products and they say, oh my god, this is so expensive, so rich, why do you do all this for plants? But for us, plants are people, are spirits. Uh, we want them to be, uh, to be uh, happy when they are growing and we know when a spirit or a plant is happy like an animal, like a human being, he will give you the best of him. So yes, we do uh, the food and supplements that are really of the high end. So this again, you know Flora series, most of you. It is our, this is our mineral brand. Uh, it is the top of our line, but we have uh, other products in the mineral line. Again, uh, we, we, we offer them in different uh, volumes for big operations or small operations. This is important to me. Um, this is our organic line, and if you can see... This. This is our organic line. And you see Terra Aquatica by GHE. You don't see GHE anymore here as a, as a main individual brand. Why? Because in 2014, the American company, General Hydroponics and Lawrence Brook, its owner and founder, decided to sell GH US to a very big group of, uh, of industrialists. And the name of these people are Scott's Miracle Grow. They are number one in North America in uh, selling uh, um, gardening and horticulture uh, goods. And um, when this, the sale happened, uh, we said uh, to Larry Brooke, uh, we don't want to sell GHE to these people. We are not at all happy with who they are. Uh, but uh, of course, they offered so much, so many millions and millions that an individual, simple individual had a hard time uh, not selling it. So this Larry decided to sell. But we didn't. And we remain an independent company. Now, since that sale, being Scott's Miracle Grow, they are associated with Monsanto products. So people r rapidly made the, the merge GH, Scott's Miracle Grow, G, uh, Monsanto, GHE. And people thought that our products are also sold to Monsanto, which is wrong. We don't like these people. We are not con uh, um, associated with them in any way. We keep our integrity and our independence. But we had to make the difference. We had to stop being associated with the name of GHE, and this um, was cost us a lot emotionally because it took us 25 years to build that company in Europe, and suddenly we had to just let it go. Anyway, GHE today is transforming, it is morphing, it is metamorphosing into Terra Aquatica. And the organic line that you see here, pro-organic, pro-bloom, pro-roots, and diamond nectar, are the first 
products that we are going to get into Terra Aquatica. So if one day you saw Terra Aquatica sign, don't think it is a foreigner. It is still the same company. It is GHE. Same formula, same people, same family, same team working. I get emotional, sorry, but it is so important for me that people know that. So this is the, the new uh, hydroponic system that William and Larry Brook designed. And uh, if you want to see what it looks like, I think we have a little model in the, in the ex exhibition inside. Uh, the good part of uh, this new system is that you can open it, you can wash it easily, uh, it is extremely user friendly, and uh, it's not so costly. It's uh, like the aeroflow, like our old system. So in fact today we have uh, two, not today also, but still, uh, we have uh, two, um, two, two labels for our products. Uh, one is uh, mineral, but highly um, productive and highly uh, pure and precise minerals. And then you have the bioponics. Bioponics is organic nutrients for hydroponics. It is probably the only uh, nutrient line that is conceived for hydroponics. Uh, this is uh, William who created it, and uh, and he lay, he patented uh, the name and the and the technology in France in 2005. So bioponics is hydroponics, but organic. So this is important because if someone wants to start a family farm. What does he do? How does he begin? So it is important to know that the basic, the most important part of it is the choice of your crop. If you have a uh, 25,000 uh, euro uh, greenhouse or a 50,000 euro greenhouse, well, it is a lot of money invested and you want a good return on your money. So often people would think, okay, I will grow salads, basil, uh, because everybody in the, in the, in the street, in the, in the shops around me would like to have them. But in reality, everybody can grow salads in soil, in hydro, in anywhere. But to really get a good return on your investment for hydro, it is good to choose your crop. Um, what we did at the beginning and what Les Sourciers continued to do at the, in, in 2014 is to go and inquire in the neighborhood. What kind of products do you need? You go to the shops, to the uh, grocery stores, to the restaurants, to the hotels. What is it that you need that would be valuable for you? And then they will tell you and you make a list. And from that list you can choose the plants that will grow best in your systems, in your facility, and also that will, com uh, co uh, that will be uh, compatible with the market demand. And at that moment, you can ask a good price for your crop, and this is extremely important. It doesn't mean that you, doesn't, you don't have to make salads, but if you make lettuce, you, do, you choose maybe the best or the most uh, rare uh, lettuce heads that can be on the market. Uh, so you give a value to your crop. So, of course, as I say in the slides, uh, it's, it works very well in hydro, but of course very, very well in soil. <coughs> yeah, and I put the, the, the link to Les Sourciers, uh, because really they have a list of extremely interesting plants uh, that they have been growing, uh, and this is how they took their place on the market, and today um, they have lists of high uh, star Michelin restaurants uh, in Bordeaux, Toulouse, in our area, that are waiting for them to be able to be served. So this is the importance of choosing your crop. Choosing the equipment also is important. Of course, if you're in soil, you're going to try to get the best soil possible, system possible. Um, our systems are designed, we, we, are, we have been in hydroponics since 1976. Um, we may be looking old, but uh, we have been working a lot all these years and uh, modifying and improving on our systems regularly. But the really, the, 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 the secret of a good hydroponic system, apart from the practicality of using it, is also the way it oxygenates the water. And the, the, and the, 
the balance between uh, uh, the flow of the water, the spray of the water, this is extremely important. So uh, I always say, don't save. If you want to go hydroponic, don't save on the price of what you are doing. By the way, we have other kinds of systems that are maybe more practical, more user-friendly, but uh, the hydroflow is one of our best choices. Of course, adapt your uh, growing facility to your weather conditions. Uh, as you can see in this photo, no, <laughs> you cannot see in this photo. Uh, as you can see in this photo, we have here uh, basil roots growing. It is uh, 48, I think it's 48 percent humidity and 47 degrees centigrade. This was in summer in a greenhouse. But when you have a very well oxygenated uh, system, it will help you get good roots and healthy plants. At the same time, there are other um, microorganisms that we will add and that you will find in our literature that will help also uh, plants when in, in very hot weather. This is, these are examples of uh, some of, our, uh, of the different uh, farms that we have been developing worldwide. Uh, this one was uh, in Lebanon created in 2012, uh, smart farms, they grow in uh, coconut fiber um, with our nutrients. They were very happy and uh, they started uh, very, very small and uh, slowly, slowly they are developing. But they will not go, they will not become industrial farming and this is important for me to, to stress on. Um, the next one is also in Lebanon, it is called HydroLab. Uh, they created uh, four or five greenhouses and in each greenhouse they have different kinds of plants growing. They serve the restaurants in the Beirut area in the, in the capital. This is in the Caribbean. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, operation was closed in 2014 uh, because the guy uh, at the beginning was uh, growing food to sell in the, in the grocery stores and restaurants and nowadays he, he's not doing so anymore but he's doing uh, cuttings, plants uh, to, to sell to people who want to start uh, new operations. So it is a very successful new way, a new conversion of his, uh, of his operation. This is in Spain. Uh, she's, uh, it's Purificación Gonzalez is her, the name of the lady who created this place. And um, as you see, she, uh, she, starts, she, she goes on rafts. She grows the salads on rafts and uh, picks and converts the, the uh, packages, her, um, um, her lettuces in uh, special containers and she sells them everywhere. She's using bioponics. <coughs> She's using bioponics. She had, at the beginning, she had an organic uh, certification for her crops, uh, but uh, after a while, um, they stopped giving her that certification because she was growing out of soil. And for uh, certifi uh, organic certification agencies, often they want soil, they don't want uh, hydroponics. You have to have uh, contact with soil. So, where do you do hydroponics? Everywhere. Mm this photo was taken on the roof of a library in Grenoble, in the south, in the, in the Alps, in France. Um, in fact, uh, on the terrace they are growing the plants and people can uh, borrow books in the library downstairs and go upstairs in the, on the terrace to read them and uh, eventually uh, uh, have a little strawberry or a little something. But still being in the, in the greenery is very important for us in the city, so this is uh, one of their uh, the applications. Um, this, uh, yeah, indoor and outdoor, of course. This was in New York, that was a long, long time ago. I think it was in uh, maybe uh, 1998, 99, I don't remember exactly. It's on a barge. <laughs> it's on a barge. Uh, on a boat uh, in New York, and they are growing uh, greens for the, for the people uh, around them. This was uh, a boat called Tara. Tara is an oceana oceanographic uh, research boat that went to the Arctic. 
their, uh, the aim, the goal of their um, trip was to uh, study the climate changes uh, on the poles and uh, they needed a place uh, to grow food, uh, not necessarily to eat, but uh, having a little bit of greenery is important for them, but also for the crew to have a green space to, 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 to be on. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so Tara went uh, for different seasons, they went for six months at a time, and uh, they were using uh, Aeroflow and uh, Flora series. They were quite happy and they sent us this photo. This logo was the first one with General Hype GHE uh, when we just created it. Uh, on the side, uh, I put uh, this uh, design of a space station because, in fact, uh, at the very beginning of GH uh, in, in, the, in the US, in California, uh, the NASA was using Flora series and our aeroflows for their experiments to see if they can take them in space. Uh, I don't know what the project became because we, we, were, we went away, uh, but um, I know that there are many studies made for food to be grown on those uh, uh, spatial uh, stations. I think this is our greenhouse, yes. Uh, this is our greenhouse in the south of France. In fact, our company is uh, in halfway between Bordeaux and Toulouse, for those who know a little bit of France uh, geography. Um, it is a very nice region. It is warm enough, but not too warm, for plants to be growing uh, uh, quite well. Um, yeah, we have been growing at that time 350 species, maybe more different species of plants. We are extremely passionate about plants. We don't only grow uh, food plants, but we also grow uh, plants for perfume, medicinal plants, rare plants, uh, ethnobotanical of different, different kinds. In fact, when we travel, we gather different plants, we bring them home. And just to make sure that they can grow correctly, not only in our climate, but also with our systems and nutrients. So um, this, uh, this greenhouse is our uh, uh, window, it's our showcase, and also it is our passion. Where to find us in Russia? Well, I think everybody here knows Grow Trade. They have been our distributors, I think, since 2003. Uh, since then, we have uh, um, developed a lot, uh, and uh, now you can find us in most of the grow shops uh, in Russia. Uh, I put here a link. Uh, oops. Ah. Very sorry. What is this? Ah, well, yes, a different photo. Um, yeah, uh, there must be a link somewhere. They didn't put them. And if you go on eurohydro.com and you look at uh, where to buy uh, in Russia, you will have the list of all the shops that are distributing our products. And uh, with Grow Trade, uh, since 2003, we have been having a really excellent uh, relationship cooperation. They have been very honorful for us and uh, we like to work with them very much. Books, information, well, oops. <laughs> William Texier book, I think uh, he has signed enough books during this weekend, I think that many people know him, but if somebody doesn't, well, this is a very interesting book. Uh, it is very detailed, at the same time it's very simple, it's about hydroponics, but also about uh, plant uh, uh, nutrition. So you will find it very interesting, and it is sold in all the good shops and by grocery again. And the, the book on the right, if I kept it, uh, it is written in English, has not been translated, but uh, the person who, uh, who wrote that book, in fact there are two persons, we know them, they are uh, professors at the Davis University of California, and uh, these books are uh, highly uh, interesting as scientific information, technical information also. So if you read English and you are interested, I think it's a good choice. And uh, before we part, uh, this is uh, Lawrence Brook, founder of General Hydroponics in the US. Uh, he remains a very dear friend. He remains uh, associated with our work here in Europe. Uh, he is, uh, although the millions can, uh, can help uh, somebody uh, forget uh, where he comes from and accept uh, to sell his company, uh, he didn't sell it with uh, lots of uh, pleasure. I think that it was a hard choice for him. Uh, but he remains inventor um, of hydroponics, of food, uh, of, uh, sorry, of nutrient uh, formulas. He has still a lot in his sleeve. And uh, next year, his non-compete uh, uh, agreement 
went with Scott will be finished, so he will be back uh, with uh, very new uh, formulas uh, um, that uh, he works uh, on with William Textier uh, still today, uh, preparing for the future. Thank you very much. Spasiba. Ну и по традиции мы зададим э, вопросы. Ты свою? Поднимаем руки, у кого есть вопросы в НОЦЕТЕ, и вам принесут микрофон. Сейчас одну секундочку проверим, насколько перевод работает в гарнитуре. Проверьте, пожалуйста. Yeah. Есть, да? Слышно? Отлично, тогда вопрос слушаем. Не-не, okay. я прошу на русском задавать вопрос, чтобы весь зал понимал, о чем речь. В ухе НОЦЕТЕ будет переводиться. Хорошо. А, спасибо за прекрасную презентацию. Я хотел бы задать следующий вопрос. Если говорить о сети фермерской, не как о семейном бизнесе, а как о бизнесе, какие три типичные ошибки вы могли бы назвать для тех, кто пытается этим бизнесом заняться? Спасибо. As I said uh, at the, uh, in the presentation, I think the biggest mistake is not to find the right crop. It is very important. If you're in a city, um, people like Les Sorciers, who I showed you, or the other ones in the city, this is what they do. It is important because if your crop is, if you can find the lettuce everywhere, why should I go to a hydroponic, maybe a bit more expensive? I would go because it's fresher. It is uh, more nutritious. But do people know this and do they accept it easily? No. So get a good crop before, or a good group of crops. When we were in California, we were uh, growing, uh, because they asked for it, we were growing um, uh, red, red and, red and, uh, and uh, orange peppers and uh, Genovese basil. This is what they wanted. So this is important. And of course, be careful about uh, the costs of electricity. So, all this. Thank you. У нас есть вопросы? Слушаем вас внимательно. Микрофон включите. за выступление. У меня вопрос по удобрениям. Флора Сирис и репин. Считаете ли вы репин обязательным компонентом в трехкомпонентной системе Флора Сирис? Или это все-таки как дополнение, как стимулятор? Yeah. Uh, ripen is important for different reasons, um, not necessarily during the growth of your crop, but especially at the end. Um, the ripen metabolize, helps the plant metabolize all the um, ingredients it, is, it has absorbed during its growth. So it helps it release all these, these, these ingredients before um, you, you harvest your crop, so it cleans your plants from any residue that is still there. At the same time, it sends it a message to say it is the end of life. So it helps the plant produce more and more active principles so that the plant is richer and more nutritious. So it is not necessary, but it is a good complement. Давайте следующий вопрос. Сейчас одну секундочку. Дайте, пожалуйста, ориентиры э, по экономике, какая себестоимость килограмма урожая, допустим, для салата, и какая доля в этой себестоимости расходов на удобрение, электричество и работу, зарплату. Mm. Mm. 
Thank you. Um, I don't have an answer to that question, but I will make a note and if you give me an email, I can answer you. I will go to the dossier because as I said, I have been retired for a few years, a couple of years now, and I don't know exactly today what it is about. So I will be happy to answer this question in, later on, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, maybe, excuse me, maybe, William, do you have an answer to this question? La question était de savoir quel est le, le, le rapport entre le, le prix de, de vente d'une laitue, par exemple, et les dépenses, les coûts. Et j'ai dit que je demanderais aux sourciers, mais est-ce que tu sais, toi Non. 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 Je préfère to answer you uh, in more details. Спасибо за лекцию. Вопрос такой, теряет ли растение в вкусе и аромате при создании идеальных условий? Или это зависит от генетики? Надо ли создавать контролируемый стресс растения? Yeah. Um, for a plant to give you the best, it has to be happy. And yes, it is good to control as much as possible its environment, to adapt the environment to your plants. Uh, now, this is why the question of uh, this gentleman here about uh, what uh, mistake can we do when uh, we want to make a commercial uh, um, operation is to choose the plant that will be adapted and adaptable to your environment. Yes, a plant, if it is not happy, if it's not in its own environment, will not give you the best. Now, we have noticed uh, with the years of experience growing plants that when you bring it, not to all that it needs, but the essentials, the, the temperature, the humidity, uh, the nutrition, um, the care, uh, to be careful that uh, there are not too many uh, predators, uh, invasive uh, insects. It will give you the best, especially if you give it uh, a good uh, eye care. You see, one of the things about industrial growing is that it is uh, managed by computers. The human eye is not there anymore. When you have your human eye coming and seeing and you see the beginning of that, ah, this plant looks a little bit weak today. You look around, ah, maybe another one is looking weak. Then you can do something. A program, a, 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 a computer doesn't see these things. So having a presence, a human presence around your plants is very important for it to give the best of uh, what it has to give. Does this answer your question? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, please. У меня есть вопрос. Вы говорили про выращивание в незанятых городских местах, парковках и так далее. Я хотел бы спросить, не возникает ли опасность попадения всяких токсичных веществ из городской среды в растения, которые предназначаются для питания? Um, yes and no. Uh, I would say yes because maybe uh, uh, if uh, your environment is extremely toxic, uh, the plant can, uh, can react to it. Now, uh, I have seen, and as you have seen on these few uh, uh, slides, uh, in Paris, Paris is a very polluted city and uh, people growing on the roofs uh, are not experimenting uh, damage to their plants. So it's good to be uh, careful, but uh, again, if you are there, if you are present and if you are using good products for your plants, uh, toxicity will be much less. Because toxicity is in the air today, what we are breathing here today is toxic. So the plants will also react to the same sort of toxicity. What we need to do is to reduce it as much as we can. Спасибо большое. Давайте еще последний вопрос зададим Ноцети и пустим ее отдыхать. Так, сейчас микрофон дойдет. Пожалуйста, ваш вопрос. Спасибо большое за интересную информацию. У меня такой вопрос. Как вы считаете, 
Растению имеет значение, откуда приходят питательные элементы из минеральных удобрений или из органических. Very good question, thank you. <laughs> um, well, what we have noticed, what we know, is that a plant will take its food uh, in the form of uh, uh, minerals, ions. So, if the food is organic or mineral, it doesn't matter, it will still take it in the same way. What is important, maybe, um, is that uh, um, the way it's going to take the organic and the way it's going to take the mineral we may differ. The ions uh, available may differ, but it is a very good question. And when at the beginning somebody would say, oh, it's hydroponic, it's not organic, we wrote article after article after article saying it doesn't really matter. What what, what matters really is how the nutrient has been made. Uh, it is, it's like uh, when they tell us today, uh, buy a, a, an electric car, it is less polluting. Yeah, of course it's not using um, fossil fuels, but it is using both batteries and rare metals. So, you know what I mean? It depends how they have been made. This is important. But for the plant, it doesn't matter. Давайте поблагодарим Ноцету за выступление. Я буду...